Today, we talk about... I, I so envy people who aren't into sports. Actually, let's talk about that. Um, but yeah, just, I, I just wanted to say, before I forget, um, yeah, I, I don't, like, I, I love the Niners. I root for them. And I was so happy when they beat the Patriots during the regular season that they made it to the Super Bowl. But um, my hatred was purely just everyone else hates them. Just being a kid, just being stupid, not like, attaching my popularity of everyone hates them, so I'm going to hate everybody, them Everybody, like, everybody claims to love the underdog. It's like, he okay, he's not the underdog anymore because he's got six rings. He's got the... Belichick's the greatest coach in the history of professional oh, sports. Sure. Yeah. They've gone to fucking ten Super Bowls. But, like, he was picked in the sixth round. Yeah. Like, he wasn't... This wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah. So this is, like, the the great underdog story of the modern era. I mean, his, his story will age well, he's, you know? he's so successful that, like, the deflate gate horseshit... It was total horseshit. They won by 43 points. 42 points. Yeah, I mean, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> Two PSI doesn't account yeah. for fucking 42 points. It yeah. doesn't. Actually, that reminds me of another thing I'm, I'm going to ask you, but I do want to go back to that uh, being jealous of people that aren't into sports thing. I agree with you, and I think it's kind of similar to politics, where it's just like, you pick a team, and whatever oh, the analysts say, you attach yourself yeah, yeah. to your favorite analysts, then that's your opinions on it, and All that's right. it. You know, But the difference, I think, that makes sports better than politics is it's fun. <laughs> hey, it's, it's fun. They're fun. Hey, it's fun. Although politics fans will tell you that's fun. Uh, I don't know what to tell you there. But um, not only is it fun, but you can actually have objective evidence with sports. Like I saw the ball go over the goal line. I saw them score forty three points. With politics, it's just like he said, she said. Did you hear this report? Did, did you hear behind this closed doors in this meeting they discussed this? It's because of this and this and, and this. And, 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 and specifically with like politics, it's like no, the evidence is there. It's just buried under six hundred and fifty pages of a fucking if report. That, yeah. yeah. Or it's just behind closed doors and speculations. Or and so blah, and so, blah. so and so voted against a bill that would fund fund the VA. How did he hates? He or she hates the veterans, but it's like if you look at it, it's like, well, they only voted against that because that was that was pork barreled into this bill that had nothing to do with that, and they were voting against the bill. So yeah, it's, it's yeah, all. See, there's nuance, but you can say that for sports too. Like if you attach yourself to a certain a, a certain stat and you ignore like maybe a bigger picture, or mm-hmm. like you single out a certain statistic, as many do with statistics, you can make a story, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, there is still the look test. Like I saw him do these things. Yeah. I don't care about these numbers or your report. I'm a fan of this, right? And you have maybe not objective evidence, but way more objective evidence, in my opinion, than politics, which is all like you weren't at the meeting, you weren't at the exactly the like, thing. Like I grew up, like I grew up, I heard my dad, I heard like all people his age talking about watching Joe Montana, and I that was the other thing where I realized it's like this is this is who I'm going to be talking to kids about in 20 years. Yeah. Like oh yeah, so and so is good, but he's no fucking Tom Brady. I'll even get an East Coast accent when I'm talking about it. <laughs> that's your Bill Burr coming. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I think that's an important point because um, I don't understand the attachment. Well, I guess I can understand the attachment in terms of like, that's like your maybe your childhood hero or, or like a, a memory in time that you want to picture as the best time ever and being there for it. For example, you know, Michael Jordan. If you were around for that era, you went courtside, you got mm-hmm. lucky enough to have Jordan sign your ball and... You saw him do this fantastic dunk. Then when LeBron comes along, he's going to have to really prove that he's the best player. You're not going to let go of that emotion you have to Jordan that easy. But I would argue if you start to use more logic and less emotion and less nostalgia, you would want more better players than your heroes to come along because that just means a better product. That just means more amazing feats that you've never seen before, more talent. Like, why wouldn't you... Because, hey, we're around for the LeBron era now. We could talk about that in 20 years and be like, mm-hmm. hey, we were around for the LeBron era and the Jordan era. Like, why can't you have both, you know? It's like... It's, it's silly. It's really just, like, comparing... Like, when I talk about, like, the best quarterback, I go, there are probably... There are, like, five or six who, if you plug them into each situation... If you put Tom Brady on those 49ers teams in the 80s, 100% they win all four games. Win all four Super Bowls. We'll never know. There's no, there's no, objectively that Tom Brady is as clutch as it gets. Oh, okay, from a clutch. But at the same time, if you put Joe Montana on all these Patriots teams that went to the Super Bowl, he wins at least six of the nine they've been to. Well, I mean, you could make an argument he wins all nine there. Yeah, I mean, but it may not be the, it may not be the same six. Right. Like they might lose to the Eagles in '04, but they beat the Giants in 2007 and go undefeated. Who knows? Yeah. Well, see, that's another thing I hate about sports is we're constantly. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of contradict myself here because I just said how we have the numbers and we have objective stuff to go by with sports, but 
it gets murky when you start to compare players purely by the stats. From different eras. Not only different eras, but like, dude, the only way to scientifically prove that this player is better than this player is if somehow we could go back in time and replace this player on this team and replace this player on this team and see what the outcomes are. I think... I, That's my, literally the only way my opinion, Well, speak. I think it's different... Uh, football is different than like basketball or baseball. Baseball, baseball is different for sure because it's slower paced and like everybody, everybody on a team is going to face the same pitcher. Sure. So it's kind, it's kind of more controlled. Sure. So it's it's easier to kind of control that. But you could Whereas argue like, a different manager, a different. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, purely statistically, sure. statistic. I'm not talking like wins and losses. Statistically. Well, I would like, argue it plays a factor, but I'll, um, I'll play. Like I'm not saying it doesn't play a factor. Sure. I'm just saying it doesn't play as big a factor Fair. as like football. It requires ten other people. It, yeah, there are a, yeah ten other people per play plus whereas, a good coach plus a and good a good coach holds plus, yeah. coaching step every single play. Whereas like if you're going up to bat, yeah, you got the whole team, but there's one person in the batter's box and it's you. Yep. Um, so I think stat you can compare stats and baseball but even like then it's hard to it's hard to compare like Antonio Brown who's the best receiver in the league to Don Houston who was the best receiver of the 1940s yeah it's impossible because, because they're different eras but if you because he was so great then if you plugged him in if he was coming up right now and he had today's knowledge today's oh, yeah. training he, he would be just as great that's my art where okay. if you put Tom Brady back in the 80s with the rules, the equipment, the training, this and that. He probably doesn't play till he's 45 because it's more dangerous. But he still is great. But also, I think if you take Tom Brady off the Patriots, they still win a couple Super Bowls. They don't win six. Okay. That's fair. Because, they, yeah, the year that uh, he got injured, Matt Castle comes in, they like... They won 11 games. 11 games, right? They won 11 games, but they missed the playoffs. Yeah. I mean that's that was that was, a la- that actually, that was the very last time they lost that division. They've won ten straight division yeah. titles. I just saw it on ESPN well, earlier. You know, did you? Jets, Miami, and uh, Buffalo. But you know, anyway, but see, that's another factor. You know, just the luck of being in a certain division or whatever. There's so many factors. You, you can argue the division with the Patriots, but they go into the playoffs every year and hey, then they beat all the best teams. That is the one argument you can always make, which is if it was that easy, everyone would be doing exactly. it. So I get that argument, but. Purely the argument of which player is better, like, because I'm a big Kobe stan, so I would argue that Kobe's better than Michael because his range is better, he had to go against better competition. I think that's a, that's a, that's a, also, they both had the same coach, and who won more titles with that coach, though? Well, who had Scottie Pippen and uh, Dennis Rodman and... Uh, I mean, Kobe you know. had Shaq. Yeah, so he won three of those. So I don't know. As if, as if they stuck together. You know? And wasn't there like a mobbed up ref for one of those too? A mobbed up ref? Like a re- he went to he went oh, to, like ja- a, a he went to jail for yeah. fixing yeah, a game. Donaghy, yeah, yeah. yeah. Donaghy, Doherty, whatever. So, um, Whereas I mean, Michael Jackson or not Michael Michael Jackson and Michael Jordan's records—they're both flawless. But again, I don't think that's fair because I literally because th- again, don't forget, I'm coming from this from a science perspective, mm-hmm. given my math science background. You have to have a controlled experiment to be able to compare two variables. So the only way you can do a scientific experiment is if you literally only change one variable. If you change two variables, that study is whack. It's But here's, here, this is just, it's fun. That, it's that's, fun. I honestly, this is where I was heading. Yeah. I was just gonna say, listen, why don't we all just relax I don't, but it's and fun. have some fun? Oh, you're saying it's fun to argue. It's just fun. Yeah. Right. It's, and especially with like basketball, I don't give a shit. Okay. I don't care. But football, I mean, I'm partial because I'm a Bears fan. I think the greatest football player of all time is Walter Payton, and okay. I don't even think it's fucking close. Okay. But there's only one other running back I would I would even entertain somebody saying is better. Let me see if I can guess it. Um, a better running back. I'm going to guess. I'm surprised no immediate running back has come in mind. Well, he's in the same division. Let's see, Bears, Packers, Vikings. Oh, Adrian Peterson? Okay, I was about to say. Uh, who's the last team in that division? The Lions. Lions. Oh, okay. Barry Sanders? Yep. He's so good. Okay. He's so good. Before my time, so. He's so good. Before Actually, I did see too. highlights. Highlights I've seen incredible. the highlights. I've seen the stats. Incredible highlights. I mean, he retired. He retired partly because he didn't want to break the rushing record. But the other part was, I've been in Detroit for 10 seasons, and we've sucked. 
for 10 seasons. But they got to the NFC Championship one year, but they lost. I mean, they should just... Same thing happened to Calvin Johnson 10 years later. He's like, I'm the best in the league at this, but I cannot stand being on a team that is this <laughs> mediocre. But then why didn't he just go to a different team? Because he, he had a contract. He had to either retire or... Oh, is that why? Yeah, he, was, he couldn't get out of the contract. I mean, he could have pulled one of these new age player moves and just be like, I'm not playing unless you trade me. That's yeah, thing, but this was, this was a few years ago Before in a different that, time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a much simpler back in 2015 yeah. or whenever he retired. I do like how it's becoming way more player-centric nowadays. I am a fan of that as opposed to the team thing because I'm starting to give less appreciation to championships, to um, wins in general, uh, which I there's you a very... fantasy? No. Okay, good. I don't either. Yeah, I can't say I that. don't, I don't, uh, almost purely because I don't want to have to root against my team. All right, that's right. That's fair. Um, I also don't want to have to care about all these other players. Exactly. And the two times I did fantasy, I ended up just drafting 49ers players anyway. Just yeah, it's like, like okay. I think, I think, uh, I like, Keep talking. I'm a fan of uh, players that stay on a team. Like, there's, like, I don't want to see Tom Brady play for anybody else. He never will, obviously. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to see Tom Brady in a fucking Bears jersey. <laughs> Bears jersey. I mean, really? as, as great as it would have been well, 15 actually, years ago. By the, by the time he, uh, well, for a second I thought the screen froze because you had your hand held up. Oh, I was like, I didn't wait, know what you were shit, did this, uh, did this freeze? No, um. On top of the fact that by the time he got to the Bears, he'd be watching. Yeah, he'd be, uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Or, uh, uh, I don't know, like Larry Fitzgerald is the perfect example of this. Be, he is so underrated. I mean, he's like second all time on all the yards, catches, touchdowns. He's second to Jerry Rice on like every stat. Right. And he's respected because he's the best fucking nicest guy in the world. Sure. But he kind of gets lost in the shuffle because he's been on Arizona for 16 seasons. Yeah. And they have they were good that one year. So close. They were yeah. so close. And he had that hero moment just before, right? Ah, I fucking hate the Steelers History so sucks. Much. Am I, I right? Fucking hate, <laughs> fucking hate the Steelers so much. Everyone hates the Steelers. Right? Oh, I hate yeah. them so much. <laughs> but, um, that, but that's you're sort of on the same page as me, which is be a nice person. My boy T.O. got, you know, shacked because of that, right? But... Um, but yeah, be a good person, uh, and, uh, and, and just as an individual, if you don't win titles and you just are a good person and, and maximize your value See, the, the that, sport, that, I think that's more that important. Ruins, but that ruins the sports for me. Like, I am a diehard Bears fan. I fucking despise the Green Bay Packers. Right. But I don't hate Aaron Rodgers. I don't hate Aaron Rodgers the way I hated Brett Favre when I was young. I see. Because I've seen, he seems like a pretty nice dude, um... He donates a bunch of money to charity. He's funny. I mean, I've heard about the drama back behind the scenes, but sure. whatever. I'm talking just like, he seems like a solid dude. But I would argue part of that is, like you just said, growing up. Yeah, I'm also older. And gaining some logic circuits and gaining some intelligence that you didn't have as a kid to be able to recognize and separate the team from the But also, individual. I think if social media didn't exist, I'd still be that guy. Oh, I'm sure. I yeah. totally I'm not arguing it's the social media. I'm arguing percent. it's just... Growing up and, and starting to get a bigger picture of the world and realize, like, it's not that big a deal, guys. It's not. You know? But at the same time, I I bawled for hours after the Cubs won the World Series. Like, sobbed like a fucking child. <laughs> so that's the argument for people continuing to support underdog teams or underwhelming teams for so many years. It's like, that year that you it's, win the lottery. It, it makes it so much. Like, it I, makes it that much better. Like, I agree. But is it worth all the angst? Ah, uh, no. See? But... <laughs> I mean, I cannot. I can't wait for the like the Browns. They're they're the team. That's they're the team to be this year. Referred. That's who everybody's rooting for. I cannot wait for them to. I can't wait for Brady to break their hearts. It's gonna happen. That'll it's going to happen. If they get, I think they're gonna win that division. I, think, I can't even say that. I just know they'll be fun to watch. That's I think they're I'm gonna. Saying. They're definitely gonna win that division. The Steelers are. They're falling apart. Yeah. The Ravens. The Ravens are a mess. The. The Bengals, they're a fucking mess. I think the Browns are going to win that division. They might squeak past the first round. Um, I, the second round, they if they have to play New England, they won't win. My but if they get to the Super Bowl, it is incumbent upon the Chicago Bears to just wipe the floor with them. <laughs> because it needs to happen. I watch, 
I watched the Cubs lose the NLCS to the Mets in 2015, and I was heartbroken. I was very angry. But the whole year, the whole, like, literally the moment they lost, I'm like, they're going to win the World Series next year. Huh. And I'd said that a million times before. But it's like, I, I said it, and I knew it was going to happen. And then the next year, they got to the World Series. They got down. They went down 3-1 to one on my birthday. And I'm like, well, I just hope they don't lose this in Wrigley <laughs> Field, because that wouldn't be good. I hope yeah. they win the next game, so they go back to Cleveland, and then the Indians can win it in Cleveland. And then they ended up winning the whole fucking series, and it was the greatest thing. It was literally right. the fucking greatest day of my life. Right. No, I'm sure. I'll give it to you. But um, but I wish you didn't care. Yeah, yeah. Because I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have friends that they are like, I'm going to fuck about right. sports. Now, I will say it is, as far as like scaling this to thousands and thousands of people, if not millions, it is nice to have a thing to like rally around yeah. a team versus a team. That's kind of cool. I think I'll it's healthy. It As a society, I think it's healthy. Right. Especially but, in the 21st century. But I think, we still have that fucking, I want to fight yeah, this the primalistic, tribalism tribal thing. DNA. It's still in it. But that's what I'm saying. I think it just gets a little too carried away sometimes where there are still people who hate Aaron Rodgers as yeah. a Bears fan. There are people who, if you show up in a Packers jersey to the stadium, will throw things at you. Like, I think, that still exists. But, and it's, that happens everywhere. And it's really few and far between. I know, Growing up around here, I think most... It's weird. I've seen most people like their best friend is a Cubs fan and they're a Cardinals fan. Right. Or but this is an a interesting fan, a place I've started weird. to learn. My Where, brief time, and I even think that's probably it's probably more the case in the north. I don't have any evidence to back this up, but I think that's more the case in the Northeast now, especially after the Red Sox broke the fucking curse, and they've won. They've actually won more World Series this century than the Yankees have. That's so true. I think because it, since it's over. It's like, yeah, the Yankees have more, but the Red Sox, they're good now, so... The, I would argue that by saying there's so much else, so much other stuff to do in Boston and New York. That, yeah. Well, maybe not so much Boston, but in New York, I can tell you no one cares that much about Nobody cares the anymore. Red Sox, let alone... I mean, there are diehard baseball fans, and again, I'm the worst yeah, yeah. person to ask about this, too, because I've, I've never even been to a baseball game. Like an MLB game. You're missing out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I played T-ball in, yeah. in the minor leagues. Or not even minors. What's the one before it? Farm? I, you were a, you were you were going to be drafted. Oh no, I don't mean that. Sorry, I meant like what's what's the uh, not Pee Wee, but what's the what's the baseball I know what thing? You're talking, I can't find. There's all I know. Little League, Little yeah, League. Yeah. So like in Little League, there's there's Babe Ruth. I think was like the highest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then there was majors, minors, yeah, and then yeah, the yeah. level below that was farm league. So I was like farm league. Like, okay, yeah, definitely not farm. Like, I thought you were, like, oh, oh, so you're <laughs> you're good looking, smart, and we're a baseball player. Yeah, no, no, absolutely not. I suck. Um, but uh, why did I bring that up? I said that to say, yeah, I'm, I'm the wrong person to ask about like the the. Uh, but then you like you, then you like read stuff like somebody got, I think it, somebody got beaten to death at a fucking Raiders game a couple of years ago, a preseason right. game I'm not too. Right. It's like Jesus. Well, when you when you throw alcohol into the equi- in the equation, it's like you're not even like okay if you're a if you're a good team, but you're you guys haven't won your fucking division. Yeah, no, in like I don't. Fifteen years. I don't. Well, I, same thing with soccer hooligans. I just feel like it's an excuse to take out anger on. Certain well, soccer's not people. a real sport anyway. Hey. So, <laughs> I guess I take it you don't play FIFA on PlayStation. I don't. I don't. All right. Well.